Got one. This one's a nice fish. This is a nice fish, you guys. Nice brookie. Yeah. Little brookie, little native brook trout. That's cool, it's really small, but this is a whole different sport of fishing. The only native species in Wisconsin that I'm aware of. Beautiful fish, and I love fishing these small streams. I don't even care that they're small. Let this little guy go. There you go, buddy. Look at that. Just a beautiful fish. Look, swimming right there. It's orange fins with the white tips. It's tired, so it's going behind my boot because it can see, it can feel that there's a slack in the current. It's still sitting there. If I lift my boot, it's going to swim away. Look at that. It's right up against my boot. Fish is right next to my boot. Not moving at all. It's probably tired. It's probably trying to get out of the current and just rest up a little bit. A little shocked. It got caught. Probably the first time this fish has ever been caught. Look at this fish. Trout fishing open on Saturday. I went to a stocked lake, caught a lot of brown trout. Stocked lakes are fun, but this stuff is better. But a blue liner is somebody who looks at a map, like Google Maps on the computer, and they simply look for blue lines, little creeks like this one that I'm fishing at now. It's a very small creek. It's only about 15 feet wide at the widest so far. Native brook trout spawn here. It's a class one stream, which means that there's enough high quality spawning that goes on that the DNR won't stock it. And usually that means brook trout because they spawn here naturally. Now I don't come here to catch jumbos. I come out here to enjoy the native species that are native to this area of Wisconsin where I grew up and to explore new waters. I've never fished here before. I live on a trout stream that's very similar to this and I catch brook trout on there quite often, but this is a really nice experience to go to a brand new creek. This is not crappie fishing where you get slabs, you take them home, fry them up. This isn't bass fishing where you go for a five, six pounder, musky fishing where you hope you get a follow up or a bite that night. This is trout fishing. Native brook trout, beautiful fish. Probably my favorite fish in the world to catch. Even more in smallmouth, maybe. I'm gonna see if I can get another one. See any kind of wood stacking, wood pile like that? They're gonna hide just off current. They blend in there really well. They're gonna sit up against that. What I'm using, it's a Black Panther Martin number two with a gold blade. I'm getting as close to the structure as I can to keep the blade spinning while heading upstream as I walk. So in other words, I'm trying to walk upstream, cast towards these points, past the structure, in this case it would be this little pile of wood here, and get it, the Panther Martin to spin, the blade to spin, excuse me, as it's coming toward me at a steady speed, keeping it close to that structure so it's close enough for the fish to want to trigger it. If it's too far away, sometimes even a foot, the fish won't go after it. So keeping it tight is really important, especially on days where they're not hitting too strongly. So that's what I did there. And Expectedly, that's that's what happened. I missed a couple fish downstream as I'm walking up here, and I'm not sure if what those were. They, they could have been creek chubs for all I know, but I see a little back eddy there. I see some rapids coming down and pooling, so I'm going to head up this area and see what's in there. I'm going to start out to the outside of it, keeping that blade spinning at all times, and I'll work my way up toward that bank on the right side over there. And you can see this maple tree coming up here provide shade. Also there's a little tiny back out of here with a rock. They like to hide right behind there. The trick is to get this bait in there without hitting the tree. <laughs> See? I do want to go behind that rock and get the bait there. So maybe I'll swing out over here, cast in from that angle. Got one. This one's a nice fish. This is a nice fish, you guys. Nice brookie. Oh my gosh. No. That was nice. He was back under that structure there. Came out and swiped at it. Oh man. Ugh. <laughs>
Oh man, that's okay. I've caught brook trout before, but that would have been a nice one for these little creeks. Those are what you come here for. Like catching one of those a night just makes it. Like I said, this is a different sport. This is not a sport where you go out and try to catch 20. You try to catch a few. It's very finesse. It's all about the angle. It is all about making that, making sure your blade spins, setting it up for the perfect presentation as it comes through. There's a whole art to this type of trout fishing, but finesse fishing with a spinning rod and ultralight tackle like I'm using now, it's just so fun. It's my favorite thing to do in the spring, and I hope I can encourage you to do it too. Anybody can do it. It is difficult, but if you want to get into trout fishing, it's a good way to do it. You're probably going to lose a lot of baits. There's a lot of snags, but you're also going to have a ball doing it. And if you catch a big enough fish, you know, it's not going to kill the population, take it home. I usually only fish class one stream, which means that they reproduce really well. And that also means that it's nice, pure, clean water. So that's healthy for these fish to live in. And you're not gonna hurt the population by taking a couple a year, maybe just one or two. That's all I'd ever do. But this is what we come for, those bigger brook trout like that. I hope you got a good look at that fish. I would say probably eight, nine at most 10 inches. But it was a really nice fish. Let's go see if we can get another one. Nice one here. Not a giant, but a nice trout either way. Nice little fish. Beautiful little trout. Not as big as that first one I caught. That's a nice little eight inch brook trout. Beautiful little fish. Love the colors on these things. Let's let them go. There he goes over there. Trying to rest, get out of the current. See him? There he goes. Get out of there. So if you look over there, it's really hard to cast into. I don't know if you can pick this up on camera, but down here, up over there, over there. So I'm basically just kind of shooting like right in there really quick. Right in there, right in there, right in there without scaring them, but also getting that blade to spin immediately, pulling it back toward me. So that's kind of the strategy behind all this. And if you can see behind me as well, it's opened up a little bit back here, but look at this. It's a mess, like all these tags coming out. A lot of times, because I'm using a Panther Martin spinner bait, I might cast down the middle, get as close as I can to the edge here, but usually I'll just walk through that until it opens up again, just so I don't waste my time. Are there fish in there? Probably, but do I want to sit there and you know, take a half an hour to get through that little section where there might be a fish that bites my bait? Probably not. So I just move on to more open water like this with casting. Now, if I was using a worm and letting it float down the river, I'll just put a worm in a split shot and just let the current just kind of float it down like this where it can go underneath that brush. Yeah, that's a different way of fishing so it works, but with spinner baits, that is not fun. Trust me, that is just not fun. You're better off passing that stuff up and moving on. Ooh, had another hit right there. Felt hooks. This is a nice little area in here. I had a couple fish hit here, then I caught that eight incher that you saw and I cast it back in there. I had another nice one hit it. Must be a little hole here. You can go a long time on these creeks without even getting a hit. You really can. Oh, just got hit again. That one was little though. Oh, got hit again. That first one was, a, you know, five, six inches. That last one was probably like four, like the first fish I caught. <gasps> oh, I keep getting hit back in there. I'm gonna slow down my reel. <laughs> You're not gonna catch them like this. I don't know if you guys can pick that up in the water. It's it's fairly clear, but also not clear at the same time. I don't know how to explain it. It's slightly stained, I guess you can call it. And they're, what I'm guessing is the fish is right back in there against this log, and it's coming out from right to left. It's done it a number of times. So if I can get back in there, and that doesn't even work. It usually works when I cast on the other side of this twig, which is very difficult to do right now. There. But they hit it immediately. And back off. Wouldn't hurt to sharpen my hooks too on this thing. All right, one more, then I'm moving on. You know, whatever it was, it wasn't a giant, but still it's a brook trout. Got another one. 
Oh, got off. See that? Right behind that stick there. That's okay. Those little ones, you don't want to mess with too much. They're not very tough and you gotta be really careful with brook trout. They're really sensitive to being handled and temperature changes and water cleanliness, all that. Got one. Really tiny one again. But it shows you they're spawning naturally in here. They're healthy. Really small, just beautiful fish, huh? Look at that. Eventually, that's gonna grow up to be a really nice brook trout. See you later. Brook trout are very hard to catch, especially big ones. So you have to look around. You gotta look at the Google Maps. You gotta look at um, the topo feature or whatever on Onyx. Look for those blue little veins, you know, on the map. You will find them. You pull up to a bridge, walk upstream, look for deep holes and pockets, some kind of cover. Keep that Panther Martin spinning. You use light gear. You can even use like cheap gear, like an ugly stick, six foot ugly stick, light action rod, four pound trialing mono. Shove a Panther Martin on the end of it and just go at it and you'll have some luck, I promise you. You might be hard at first, you might get frustrated, you might lose a lot of baits, but it's worth it because trout are just a very special fish to me. I just think there's something really cool about how pure they are. They taste the best in my opinion. They're very hard to pursue. They can be very stubborn and it all depends on your attitude toward going to get them. I can see why a lot of people don't pursue trout. Maybe you don't have a lot in your area, but if you've got any kind of stream that looks something like this, you probably have trout somewhere. Blue lining, it's a fun thing to do. Check it out, go online, find some trout streams. If I can do what I just did, just by walking up a stream and making a couple casts here and there, you can do it too. It's gonna take some practice, but it's not that hard. Anybody can do this. Stay tuned for another episode. Thanks for joining me on this one. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you did, smash that like button, hit the subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.